How often do you wake up with morning wood? I read a study, I think it was like, I forgot what it was, but 50% something like that. Some big number of guys don't even get morning wood consistently. The reason why we usually get morning wood so you wake up with an erection is because your testosterone is largely produced at nighttime whilst you sleep. So your testosterone really peaks and peaks and peaks and peaks. And then there's other chemical stuff that happens. And essentially that results into you getting like a massive like hard on. Absolutely normal, absolutely healthy. Why are some guys not getting that ever? Why are so many guys having problems sexually? Viagra, you know, these medications for men to take to literally just maintain their erection through sex. These medications are making a lot of money. Again, another thing that, you know, I've not researched fully, but you can have a look. I saw this on a YouTuber, a big YouTuber. His YouTube name is What I've Learned. And the video title is Everything Wrong With The System. And he mentions that the biggest company that sells US pharmacies, the anti-depression pill, is also the company that has made Viagra. And one of the biggest, most negative symptoms of the antidepressant pill is erectile dysfunction. I haven't, you know, looked into the, the whole research of this myself. I just saw this on this video and, you know, it could be wrong, but this, this guy's quite credible. He's got millions of su subscribers. He does like these investigative videos and everything. Think about that. The company that mass produces antidepressant pills and incentivizes US doctors to essentially sell it, because it's not, you know, in the US, you don't give it to the patient. You sell it to the patient and the patient buys it. And then the doctor gets a profit and the company gets a profit. You know, the company that made the medication. They sell these antidepressant pills. One of the side effects is that if a guy takes it, his PB won't get hard anymore. And the same company produces Viagra. It's just the it's just a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's just a coincidence. Why do so many men need channels like this? You know, like the work we do here, I call it like, you know, men's self-improvement. But a large part of the message that I send out is related to love, relationships, dating, and sex. You've seen all the channels and content and books out there which help men to speak to women. Really take a second. Why is that needed? Why is it needed that a young man needs to go and watch YouTubers to learn how to speak to women? Because without it, he feels very angry. Anxious. And without it, he is actually terrible at it. Why? What is going on in the way that we raise boys that they need to go and find like these underground channels that, you know, apparently according to the Times cause misery are misogynistic. Why do young men seek this out? Why are these channels so popular? Why when I upload a video on like, oh yeah, the top seven ways of getting girls, it gets double as many views as every other topic. Why? Okay, it's needed. We understand it's needed, but why is it needed? Why is it appealing? And we can say, oh, you know, because it's it's a really important part of life and it is fair enough but why is it rising up exponentially right now did men 100 years ago need this kind of advice sure you know a young man might have had a conversation with his father about the girl that he wanted to marry or that you know he was he fell in love with and his father would sit, sit down and say yeah, yeah son go work in the factory and then you know go buy her some flowers and take her to the cinema and then ask her to marry you <laughs> and he's like whoa thank you father yeah <laughs> Why is it that we need this like specific advice where I'm sat here telling you, okay, bro, bro, do this, right? W when she replies in seven minutes, you reply in 14 and then make sure you never act like this. Make sure you act like this instead. Why is this needed? I think it's needed because the conditioning, the brainwashing, the propaganda that young men are going through on how to navigate their sex lives and their dating lives is ineffective, isn't it? The conventional advice of the world that you used to follow when you were a bit younger didn't really work out how you wanted and if it did, if you did attract the girl and you got into an early relationship before you ever found like content like this, that relationship probably went pretty toxic because the dynamic was all messed up. They told you to open up about your feelings, your emotions, to cry in front of her, to show vulnerability. They told you to not act masculine or disciplined or stoic. They told you that watching is okay. They told you that weakness is okay. They told you that being fat is okay. They told you that you should respect the girl boss, the boss bitch. They told you that you should be a feminist. And then none of that even led to a happy relationship. When this is the common belief amongst people, and it's entirely unnatural for us to act in this way. It's unnatural for a man to act feminine. It's unnatural for a woman to act masculine. But we do it anyway because we've just been told, yeah, this is the this is the way to equality. Yeah, we, we, this is amazing. Yeah, equal rights. And then now no one's really happy anymore. People aren't getting into relationships anymore. People aren't really having children anymore. This messed up dynamic, which largely, this isn't around the world, by the way. That's a very important point. This dynamic of, you know, like masculinity, femininity being all muddled up into some gray androgynous zone. This is not happening in every country. You do realize that, right? There's some countries out there where the men are truly masculine and the women are truly feminine. But at least where I'm from in the UK and probably in the US, well, certainly in the US, it's all messed up. And so if you're from one of those countries, if you live in one of those countries, you probably feel quite mentally 
mentally and physically just just weird because what you are supposed to be like, what you are supposed to do, you're being told, no, 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 we're, we're not like that. All of this advice leads to relationship, especially sex issues, where you could literally be doing what should be the most intimate, most passionate, most mindful experience of your entire life, which is making love. You could be doing that whilst overthinking and feeling anxious. Think about that. This may be two absolute primal, 100% mindfulness, pre present inducing activities that are absolutely sacred, that literally put you into a primal zone. There's two activities. Can you think of what they are? Oh, there's probably actually more. There's probably like maybe three. One is making love. The other one is fighting. And the third one is probably protecting your young, which relates to the second one. There's just a handful of absolute primal activities that should have been kept totally sacred. And now we have men who are making love who aren't even there. They're AFK in their own brains whilst their wife's there in front of them. They're thinking about the top seven tips that they They've learned on how to make her orgasm seven times before they have sex. All of this pressure on men. If you can't get hard, it's your fault. If she doesn't get wet, it's your fault. So whilst this could be and is a sign of low testosterone, it's also just a sign of how messed up things are just in general, especially in Western countries. Saying it like that, like making love is one of our very few primal desires that should be kept absolutely sacred. And now it's been tainted with the overthinking that stems from the condition we've been through. If I can give you just one tip when it comes to, you know, I'm not some professional, but I've read books about this. If I can give you just one tip about making love, make it absolutely animalistic, as wild and ferocious and as primal and animalistic as you possibly can. Abandon the, the modern human version of yourself and go back to that absolute primal caveman that is within you. She will be deeply impressed. And what's interesting, at that point, you will not even care if she's impressed or not. You will just do as a caveman is supposed to do and she will melt inside of your arms. And of course, do this consensually, age-appropriately, and stuff. You get my point.